We're counting down the eight most astonishing underground sites and technologies beneath the United States. Where collapsing mountains, nuclear waste vaults, coal mining robots, and hidden science labs are all part of a secret world few ever see. From decommissioned mines reinvented for groundbreaking physics research to the latest controversies in block caving and automation, this ranking reveals the engineering marvels, risks, and breakthroughs shaping what lies below our feet. Which facility transformed the most, and which innovation holds the highest stakes for our future? Let's begin our journey underground, starting with number eight. Eighth place belongs to the Sudan Underground Laboratory, where a century-old iron mine found new purpose deep beneath northern Minnesota. At a depth of 2,341 feet, the tunnels that once echoed with the clang of ore carts were transformed into one of America's first underground science labs. The conversion was no simple retrofit. Engineers faced the challenge of persistent radon gas, a byproduct of the surrounding rock, forcing the installation of advanced ventilation and air filtration systems to protect sensitive experiments and staff. Early physics teams arrived in the 1980s, using the thick shield of Earth overhead to escape cosmic rays that would overwhelm their detectors on the surface. Pioneering studies in neutrino physics and cosmic ray interactions unfolded in these dimly lit chambers laying groundwork for deeper labs to follow. But the Sudan site's relatively shallow depth and modest scale limited its reach, especially as global competition for lower background environments intensified. Even so, the Sudan Underground Laboratory stands as a testament to how America's decommissioned mines can be reborn as gateways to discovery, revealing new possibilities for the spaces left behind by industry. Number seven, the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant stands as America's only deep geologic repository for defense-related transuranic nuclear waste. Located 2,150 feet beneath southeastern New Mexico, its disposal rooms are carved into a salt bed formed nearly 250 million years ago, an environment chosen for its unique ability to seal itself over time. Unlike active mines or research labs, DYPP's mission is stewardship for millennia, not decades. Every drum of radioactive waste is stacked in chambers that the salt will eventually close around, creating a permanent barrier. The facility's engineered systems add extra layers of safety, steel containers, cementitious backfill, and sealed bulkheads. Above all, a multi-million dollar ventilation system operates around the clock, filtering every cubic foot of exhaust air through high-efficiency particulate filters to capture even microscopic contaminants. Environmental monitoring never stops. Air, soil, and water are sampled day and night, with oversight from both federal and state regulators. The 2014 radiological release tested these safeguards, prompting upgrades and proving the necessity of constant vigilance. WIAP's design reflects a different kind of underground ambition, not extraction or discovery, but the promise to isolate the most dangerous byproducts of modern industry safely for generations to come. Number six. The Sanford Underground Research Facility descends nearly a mile beneath the old Homestate gold mine in Lead, South Dakota. Here, 4,850 feet of rock shield experiments from cosmic rays, creating one of the world's quietest laboratories for particle physics. The transformation from gold rush relic to scientific powerhouse demanded more than just clearing out old tunnels. Engineers faced constant radon seepage, a legacy of the surrounding geology, forcing the installation of advanced ventilation and air filtration systems that run day and night. In these depths, the Lux Zeppelin experiment searches for dark matter, particles so elusive they pass through the Earth undetected, except in the rarest collisions. The Department of Energy invests over $15 million annually to keep the facility operating, funding both the science and the relentless battle against underground hazards. For the town of Lead, the lab has become an economic anchor, drawing researchers, technicians, and federal dollars to a region once shaped by mining booms and busts. Few places on Earth offer this combination of depth, isolation, 
and scientific ambition. The Sanford Lab stands as proof that the deepest scars left by industry can be reimagined, not just as reminders of extraction, but as frontiers for discovery, where the universe's most mysterious forces are brought within reach. Number five, the Henderson Mine in Colorado operates beneath the Continental Divide, extracting molybdenum from one of the world's largest underground ore bodies. With tunnels stretching for miles and a footprint that rivals small cities, Henderson stands apart for its use of block caving at extreme depths, sometimes more than 3,000 feet below the surface. Here, the Earth's response to mining isn't left to guesswork. A dense network of geotechnical sensors and micro-seismic monitors tracks every tremor, every shift in the rock mass, feeding real-time data to engineers above ground. Each day, these instruments record thousands of micro-seismic events, tiny fractures and slips that reveal how the cave is propagating and where stresses are building. Over decades, this data has built a living map of the mine's evolving structure, guiding safer extraction and informing global research on deep block cave design. The lessons learned at Henderson now serve as benchmarks for new projects, shaping the way mining companies predict and manage ground movement. Unlike shallower or smaller operations, Henderson's sheer scale and depth have made it a proving ground for advanced monitoring, balancing the push for higher production against the imperative of worker safety and surface stability. In the world of deep mining, the Henderson mine is both a worksite and a laboratory, where every blast and every rumble adds to a growing archive of knowledge about the risks and rewards of going deeper underground. Brr. Number four, Resolution Copper and Oak Flat in Arizona mark a collision between cutting edge mining and cultural survival. Beneath the Tonto National Forest, engineers have spent more than $2 billion preparing shafts that descend over 1,500 meters, planning to access one of the continent's largest untapped copper deposits using block caving. This method, powerful enough to collapse a mountain from below, promises to leave a crater up to two kilometers wide, reshaping the surface in slow motion over decades. The engineering is relentless. Networks of inclinometers, extensometers, and micro-seismic sensors will monitor every fracture and shift, feeding real-time data to teams above ground. Yet for the San Carlos Apache and other tribes, the stakes are existential. Oak Flat is not just a patch of forest. It is a living sacred site, home to ceremonies, medicinal plants, burials, and the stories that bind generations. Listed as a traditional cultural property on the National Register of Historic Places, Oak Flat has been federally recognized for its spiritual and historical value. But a 2014 land exchange, tucked into a defense bill, transferred these lands to mining interests, bypassing tribal consultation and igniting years of legal battles. Lawsuits now argue that the destruction of Oak Flat would violate religious freedom with the case awaiting a pivotal decision in the Ninth Circuit. Hydrologists warn of groundwater drawdown and contamination, while engineers debate if real-time monitoring can truly control the pace and spread of subsa e dents. Tribal leaders describe the planned mine as an erasure, not just of landscape, but of living tradition. For mining proponents, the project promises jobs, infrastructure, and a domestic copper supply critical for the nation's future. But for those who gather acorns and prey on this land, no amount of mitigation can replace what stands to be lost. Resolution. Copper and oak flat force a reckoning. How much can be engineered and what costs can never be reclaimed? Coming to the top three, a sudden methane spike at a Consul Energy coal mine in 2020 put the entire crew on edge. Methane, colorless and odorless, builds silently in the seams. One spark can turn a routine shift into disaster. Sensors caught the rising gas before anyone smelled trouble. In the control room, alarms sounded and the decision was immediate. Activate the autonomous ventilation units, 
send in the remote operated equipment and evacuate the face. Within minutes, robotic fans began pushing fresh air through the tunnels while battery powered inspection crawlers rolled out to scan for lingering pockets of gas. Eight miners made it to the surface without injury. For more than a month, production ground to a halt as engineers studied the event, recalibrated sensors, and ran the robots through every inch of the affected section. No one lost their life and no one was sent back into danger until the air was clear. Proof that automation can do more than cut costs, it can save lives. Traditional coal mining is a test of nerve and reflex, but the new era belongs to machines that never tire, never panic, and never risk a human life for a ton of coal. The console incident stands as a turning point, not just for one crew, but for the industry's faith in robotics as a shield against the oldest dangers beneath the earth. In second place, Peabody Energy's long-wall automation programs have rewritten the rules for underground coal mining in America. Since the early 2000s, Peabody has invested in the systematic rollout of mechanized long-wall systems across its major operations in Illinois and Wyoming, sites once defined by crews working shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder in the dust and dark. The shift has been relentless. Remote-operated shearers now slice coal from the face with a precision and speed no human crew could match, while hydraulic shields and conveyor belts move in perfect synchrony, all monitored from control rooms far from the danger zone. For miners, the change is as much cultural as technical. The number of on-site jobs per million tons of coal has dropped by nearly 60% over two decades. Where a hundred workers once crowded the face, today, a handful supervise robotic fleets, troubleshoot software, and maintain automated cutting heads. Peabody's retraining programs offer new roles, technicians, data analysts, remote operators, but not every displaced miner finds a place in this new order. In towns built around the mine gate, the impact is unmistakable. Some families see steady paychecks and safer conditions. Others face dwindling opportunities and a fraying social fabric. Local stores, schools, and diners feel the shift with every round of layoffs or new equipment delivery. Yet the gains are undeniable. Injury rates have fallen and fatal accidents on the long wall face are now rare events. Productivity per worker has soared, allowing Peabody to compete globally even as coal demand shifts and regulatory pressures mount. The promise of automation is clear. Fewer lives risked more coal cut per hour, and a future shaped by code as much as by muscle. But for the communities that once thrived on the rhythms of shift change and the camaraderie of the pit, the cost of progress is measured not just in tons, but in the slow redefinition of what it means to work underground. And finally, in first place, Nevada Gold Mine's autonomous haulage demonstration with Komatsu in 2025 signals a new era for American mining. At the Cortez complex, a convoy of the heaviest trucks in the fleet, each weighing up to 300 tons, rolled forward, not by human hands, but guided by a digital nervous system. Each truck's path is mapped by GPS, its sensors tuned to obstacles and shifting terrain, all connected through a dedicated 5G network pulsing beneath the Nevada sky. Inside a remote operations center, engineers monitor the fleet's every move, one operator, 10 screens, hundreds of data points. This is mining by algorithm, not instinct. The promise is clear. Round-the-clock operation, fewer accidents, and the elimination of fatigue as a risk. For decades, the industry has dreamed of a shift where no one needs to climb into the cab before dawn or brace against the midday heat. Now, the trucks never sleep. The system responds to hazards in milliseconds, breaking or rerouting before a human could even react. Barrick and Newmont, the joint venture behind Nevada Gold Mines, describe the project as a milestone, America's largest gold operation, now leading the charge in automation. Komatsu's frontrunner platform, already proven in Australia and Chile, adapts here to the scale and complexity of 
Nevada's ore bodies. The ambition is not just efficiency, but a transformation in safety. Fewer workers exposed to the pit, fewer chances for error, and a record of predictable, repeatable performance. Yet the stakes go beyond engineering. For every truck that rolls without a driver, questions multiply about the future of mining towns, the fate of traditional roles, and the skills that will define the next generation of miners. The 2025 demo was a spectacle, a signal that the world's richest gold fields are entering a new phase. But as the dust settles, the consequences ripple outward. From the control room to the Union Hall, from rural main streets to the global metals market, the largest autonomous fleet in U.S. mining is not just a technical achievement, it's a glimpse of a future where the line between machine and miner blurs, and where the definition of work, risk, and reward is rewritten beneath the Nevada earth. From the modest beginnings of the Sudan Underground Laboratory to the cutting-edge Nevada Gold Mines Autonomous Haulage Demonstration, this countdown has uncovered the astonishing range of what lies beneath the U.S. The list revealed a progression, from abandoned mines transformed into physics labs, to vast salt caverns safeguarding radioactive waste, to the immense risks and controversies of block caving beneath sacred lands. The most dramatic shift came with the rise of mining automation. Robots saving lives during methane spikes, entire coal operations restructured by long wall machinery, and finally, fleets of driverless trucks charting the future of extraction. Across all eight entries, a pattern emerged. Depth and technology are reshaping not just how we mine, but who benefits, who is at risk, and what's left behind. The ranking highlights how underground America is no longer just about resource extraction. It's a frontier where science, safety, culture, and automation collide. The secret world beneath us isn't static. It's evolving rapidly, with consequences that reach far beyond the mine shafts and tunnels.